And good evening, everyone. Welcome to another exciting Saturday Night Wine Stream and another exciting episode of Drink with Rick. I'm Rick, and this is episode number 96. I had to check my notes for a moment, make sure I didn't lose count. 96, we're almost there, folks, to the big 100 episode. So I'm planning something really special for that. So please hang around for that, please. And I'll try to do the same. <laughs> uh, you know, this is the first Saturday Night Wine Stream of 2021. Yes, we did do the special. We did do the uh, New Year's Eve special, but actually that was on a Thursday night to Friday morning on New Year's Eve. And uh, this is actually the first Saturday night wine stream that we're doing on Saturday night, the first Saturday night of the year. So um, this should be exciting. I've got a big show planned up for you, as uh, you know, as you might expect. I, uh, this is a stream of consciousness sh uh, show, so to speak. Uh, it is really a stream of consciousness kind of show. I do have some show notes. They're right here with me. I don't always follow them. Sometimes I follow them a little bit. Sometimes I really don't follow them much at all, to be honest. Uh, because I rely on everyone's participation in the chat. Because this show is uh, not about me. It's a little bit about the wine, but this is mostly about you and me, us together, just having a great time on Saturday night, just having a good time kicking back. And it doesn't have to be wine we're drinking. Uh, I'll be drinking wine, but you don't have to do that if you don't want to. You can drink beer. You can drink uh, your favorite alcoholic libation or non-alcoholic libation, as the case may be. You could drink water if you want. It's okay. Have a Coke. Have a smile. I don't know. It's, yeah, that was not a product endorsement, by the way. <laughs> but, um it's just us getting together, just having a great time. Now, look, if you're joining me for the first time, we uh, we have an open chat here, and you can chat with me on any of these venues here. You can chat with me live on Facebook, on the Facebook group, Drink With Rick, and you can chat with me live on YouTube. YouTube is Drink With Rick. On Twitch, Twitch is Drink With Rick 1, Drink With Rick and the number 1. And on Twitter, it, uh, via Periscope, it is at Drink with Rick. And also on the website, drinkwithrick.com. The website's right down here. You can contact me also for uh, anything, any uh, feedback. Uh, if you want to send me a wine to review, that's fine too. Uh, Rick at SavoyaMedia.com. Rick at SavoyaMedia.com. That's where to contact me. Uh, also, the podcast. We do, you know, this is also a podcast, not just a live stream, but it's also a podcast. And I try to keep the listeners in mind when I'm doing this uh, with the the visuals here, but this is also a podcast that goes out on Monday nights, Monday nights at 10 p.m. Eastern Time, uh, every Monday night, 10 p.m. sharp, and you can subscribe to it, the podcast, on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, TuneIn, your favorite Android uh, app, Stitcher Radio, Blueberry.com, iHeartRadio, Deezer, Amazon Music, uh, the new podcast index, Dot com and by email. If you go to the website, website is drinkwithrick.com, click on the subscribe page and uh, you click on the by email, you can just input your email address and you'll get the latest episode every time a new one drops. You'll get it right away in your inbox, which is really cool. And I uh, hate no salesman will call. No salesman will call. It's just for the podcast. But you can uh, you can do that at drinkwithrick.com. Dot com. Of course, uh, Drink with Rick is part of the Savoya Media Network, uh, along with the Cube Command podcast and some of our other shows. We are part of the Savoya Media Network at SavoyaMedia.com. Okay, so this is what we've got going on tonight. We've got, a, 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 this is a Pinotage. The first wine I'm starting off with for the year is going to be a Pinotage, and I love a Pinotage. We'll get into that in just a little bit. First, I want to check the chat. I want to see who's in the chat. Uh, and say hi to everybody there. No, uh, Nothing going on on Facebook right now. Nothing going on on YouTube at the moment. But we have folks in Twitch. Cam Bread is in the chat in Twitch. And he says, hello, Rick. Glad to see you again. And as always, Cam Bread, it's great to see you too. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're here. And also that Square Guy's in the chat. And it's great to see you as always, a Square Guy. Uh, you know, it, it's great to see you here. And uh, I hope uh, Darcy's with you as well. You know, the Square Guy does a, uh, a, a really cool, he has a cool channel, but he does a, a, a nice stream with uh, Legos, and he does some gaming, and he does some, uh, he and Darcy do some 
baking videos, which are really cool. Saw the par cherry pie video, uh, most of it. I have to go back and finish it still. I haven't had a chance to do that, but I, uh, but it, it's really cool. I enjoy it. And you should check it out. It's that Square Guy, that Square Guy channel on Twitch. Really cool. Um, and uh, let's see, what, what else we got going on here in the chat? Uh, I think uh, we've got our, our mods here coming up in the chat here shortly, I believe so. So, uh, yeah, our chat is modded by my son and my daughter, and, uh, and they'll, they'll check in from time to time. Let's see what else we have going on. Nothing going on on Twitch for the most part, um, but we do have the show going live there, and you can tweet me on, on, uh, on Twitter. Also, if you go to the website, go to, if you're watching on drinkwithrick.com, we don't have a live chat going there, but we do have a comment box. If you click on the post for this episode that's going live and open up a new window with a post, you'll see a comment box, and you can put comments in there, and I will respond in kind. It might take me a little while to get to them, but, but I will respond to them. I do respond to comments, and I love getting comments. Good, bad, indifferent, whatever. Uh, I don't care. As long as they're not, you know, as long as they're... <laughs> Not laced with profanity, and, and uh, uh, they're not uh, you know, not of any evil intent, or they're not spammy. It's all, it's all good. It's all good. Okay, so this is the wine that we're drinking tonight. This is the Den. It's a Pinotage. It's a Pinotage 2019. This now a Pinotage. We're going to learn a little bit about the grape. I have opened Pinotage wines in the past, several of them. Uh, as a matter of fact, because I really have developed a, a, quite a taste for these wines. And it's not often that I'm able to get one, but when I do, I really enjoy it. And I'm hoping that I'll really enjoy this one because this came, this was a personal recommendation from uh, my friends over at uh, Sunset and Vine. This is the wine store that's up in Blowing Rock, North Carolina, which I f go to whenever we're up in the Blowing Rock and, and Boone area up in the mountains. And uh, Sharon Christmas, the, uh, the proprietor there, and uh, Bennett Larson. And Bennett uh, personally, Bennett is very knowledgeable about his wines. And uh, Bennett personally recommended this wine to me uh, as a, a Pinotage. He says, very good. He says he, he, he thinks I'll enjoy this one. And, uh, you know, I, I haven't been, I, he's never stirred me wrong on a wine yet. So I trust his judgment on this. We're going to try it again tonight. And also, Bennett, if you or Sharon are watching, I give you a shout out here to uh, Sunset and Vine. And the, the, the website is blowingrockwine.com. They're not paying me for that, okay? They're not, and I actually bought this bottle of wine. <laughs> and, and we'll get into the pricing here in a few minutes. But getting back to the wine, this is the Den. It's a 2019 Pinotage, as I mentioned before. This is a Painted Wolf uh, branded wine. I'm going to read a little bit from the back of this wine bottle because, uh, well, I really should. Um, it's the Den Pinotage, Painted Wolf, uh, W.O. Coastal Region, 2019. The Painted Wolf is also known as the African Wild Dog or Painted Dog, a highly social animal, each with its own ornate markings. The Den is at the heart of the pack, a place where painted wolves relax and bond. The Den Pinotage is luscious, fruit-packed, and full-bodied, a social wine to enjoy with family, friends, and good food. As you point your palate with this wine, you are making a contribution to the conservation of this rare and endangered animal. To find out more, go to www.paintedwolfwines.com. I did not know this. I, I actually picked it up, and I did not know that uh, I was making that contribution. Okay, well, good, good, that's fine. Uh, I don't mind doing that. And uh, it's produced and bottled by Jeremy Borg and the Painted Wolf Wines Pack at Parle, South Africa, imported by Southern Stars Incorporated's Huntington Beach, California. It is a product of South Africa, and there is 13.5% alcohol by volume in the 750 milliliter bottle of wine. So I'm looking forward to trying this out. You know what I did forget to do? I forgot to bring, I didn't, I forgot to bring up my crystal glass. Can you believe that? I forgot my crystal glass. I'm getting ready for the show and I'm doing some last minute prep. Forgot to do it. Fortunately, fortunately, we have, this is not the Sunset and Vine glass. I do have sun. well, yes, it, wait a minute. I have a Sunset and Vine glass. What am I thinking? What would be better to pour this wine in and to do it in a sunset and vine glass. I have one.
one right here. I had to reach back and get it. <laughs> but I do. I have an actual Sunset and Vine glass. Now, this is not a crystal glass. See? It's just a regular glass. But uh, this was purchased from Sunset and Vine. Oh, wow. You know, my, my, tia, uh, my, my daughter Tia did that. And I put the glass in there to show it off uh, uh, a couple weeks ago, or last week. And uh, I'm glad I left the glass in there because, you know what? <laughs> we need this glass tonight. Here's a backup glass. I'll use that as a backup. But uh, we'll keep the Sunset and Vine glass. I think that's appropriate for this wine, especially considering the fact that I purchased it from Sunset and Vine. Nice save there. And I thank my daughter Tia, CM Center, thank you very much for that save because that was largely... Um, your, your doing that uh, helped me save this, so I appreciate it. Okay, so let's take a look at this wine. Let me check the chat one more time before we open up this bottle of wine. And uh, Ed's in the chat. Ed Anthony's in the chat. My good friend, my good old friend, uh, Anthony. Uh, Ed, Ed Anthony. <laughs> I haven't had any wine yet, folks. Ed, it's great to see you, my friend. I'm glad you're here. I, I hope you were able to see the, the New Year's special. Um, if you didn't, uh, I'm sorry you missed it, but you know what? Uh, we, we're we going to have some fun tonight, and we're going to talk about sci-fi movies and TV shows. I know it's one of your favorite topics, as it is one of mine, so stick around. We're going to we're gonna have some fun. We're going to have a lot of fun. Uh, okay, so back to the wine for just a moment. Oh, wait a minute. Let me check Twitch one more time. Uh, uh, Scott MTHW says... Uh, uh, oh, he's in the chat. It's good to see you, Scott. It's good to see you. He says, are you only into wine or you, do you get involved in other alcohol too? Well, we mostly do wine on this particular show, but we have been known to have beer. And uh, we might try a few other beverages as well down the road. And um, I think I'm probably looking at maybe uh, season three, which starts in another month, uh, to do some of uh, more along those lines. But, but... I have an announcement to make here very shortly about a different kind of beverage that we're going to do. A um, Well, I've already made that decision to actually do the, uh, uh, the spinoff show of. But, uh, well, I'll talk about that later on. If I can remember, somebody remind me to do that. Ed, you can remind me to do that. <laughs> I appreciate that. Ed reminds me about a lot of things I forget because, you know, at my age, I start forgetting stuff, uh, especially after I've had half a bottle of this wine. Uh, Scott says, uh, I don't live too far from Huntington Beach. It's nice. And um, let's see, what else we have going on here? I think we're, we're caught up in the chat for the most part. And let's go ahead and open this wine and learn some more about it. Because this is a really cool wine, you know, the, the, the type of wine it is. I don't know if this one's great or not, and uh, we're going to find out. But if it's any bit as good as the other Penetages that I've had from South Africa, I should really enjoy this wine. And, of course... I almost forgot to introduce this. We're going to pair it with some food. To, to the food we're going to pair it with, we have some, uh, this was, looks like a porterhouse, what's left of a porterhouse. Um, what what we didn't get, what we didn't give to the dog. <laughs> yeah, right. What the dog didn't get, he got the bone. But uh, we have some smoked turkey from Honey Baked Ham. We have a couple of cheeses. We have this cheddar cheese that my, my wife just absolutely loves, and I like it too. And we tried it with a couple of wines, and it's worked really well with them. And also, of course, the Trader Joe's Double Cream Gouda. Yeah, we're going to try it with this one as well. And some crackers and water here to clear the palate. Yes, I do drink some other. Uh, Scott, if you, if you were asking, yes, I do. I have some water here and drink some of that. And you can drink water if you want. That's fine. Nothing wrong with that. This isn't drink wine with Rick. This isn't drink beer. It isn't drink what. It's just drink with Rick. Drink whatever you have. Drink it if you got it. <laughs> that's uh, that's my philosophy on it. Okay. So where were we? Oh yes, uh, we're going to open up this bottle of wine, and uh, I'm going to also grab my trusty Veneto aerator from the Veneto Wine Lover set. This one's a screw cap, so I'm not going to need my brand new cork screw, mechanical cork screw that my wife gave me for for the holidays. But we we might try that next week, and. Um, this is really cool. I like the aerator. It works really well. And I'm going to pop it in here. And, of course, if you're interested in this, uh, I purchased mine from Amazon. There's a link on my site at uh, drinkwithrick.com. Yeah, there's actually a banner up there. You can click on it if you're interested in purchasing it. And maybe a few cents will go to me. I don't know if Jeff Bezos uh, sees it within his, his heart somewhere to, to do that. 
<laughs> he's got billions. And, you know, what does he care? And, well, I'm not going there right now. Okay, so uh, let's see. To pour it in, I have a Sunset and Vine glass. And let's go ahead and pour a little bit in there. Oh, very nice color. I like the color. I like the complexion. Well, medium, medium uh, to full-bodied. Somewhere between medium and full-bodied, I think. Uh, it doesn't look quite full body, but it, it's it's getting there. And I have, uh, I'm going to set it on my Drink with Rick coaster. And those of you who don't have one yet, I know some of you do, but those of you who don't have one yet, I can send you one. Uh, just participate in the chat, and I might just decide to say, hey, you know, you get one. Kind of like do the Oprah thing, you know. Uh, you get a coaster, and you get a coaster, and you get, everybody gets a coaster. Yeah. Uh, I don't have that many left at the moment. I have to get some more made. But uh, we're, I'm down to the last few. But um, we'll see if we can give one one or two away here. So um, while we're having the wine aerate to uh, open up and breathe a little bit, let's find out a little bit more about it. Now, there's not a whole lot about this wine. As I said before, I picked it up from Sunset and Vine up in Blowing Rock, North Carolina. It was a personal recommendation from uh, my friend Bennett Larson up there. who's one of the proprietors. But I, I looked some of it up, and I did uh, find it, it's listed on wine.com. It's listed on Vivino. Uh, Vivino has a lot of wines. Not too many wines that aren't listed on Vivino somewhere. Uh, and also on winesearcher.com. Now, here's the interesting thing about this. Uh, about what Now, Pinotage uh, grapes, and uh, we'll talk about Pinotage grapes here in, in, a, in just a little bit because I, I have some little facts about Pinotage grapes that might interest you. It's just a very, very, this grape is actually a very young um, a grape, so to speak, as a, as a grape. And it's, uh, I'm not saying the wine's young, I'm saying that the, the type of grape is young, it hasn't been around that long. And it is uh, specific to South Africa. Now, there are some other countries that are, that are making Pinotage wines now, but it was, that's where it originated, from South Africa. And it wasn't that long ago. We're going to find out a little bit more about that in just a little bit. Uh, pretty cool stuff, actually. Uh, at least to me. <laughs> it might be to you, too. All right, so if I'm looking at um, the pricing here, Wine.com had it, uh, I think they were listing it at $14.99 a bottle for the, 20. I think that's the 2019 vintage. Yes, the 2019 vintage. And uh, the Vino had it listed for $12.34 a bottle. And Wine Searcher had it listed uh, at, I think the only place they had it was at Southern Hemisphere Wine Center in California for $12.99 a bottle. Now, this is what I have it, what I purchased it for, because I still have the receipt. Now, you know this wine's been sitting down there for a little while, but I have the original receipt from, uh, from Sunset and Vine, and I paid Painted Wolf, the Den Pinotage, $14.99 a bottle. So I paid a little on the high side for this bottle, $14.99. Um, but there are a couple of reasons for that. I think one, because there, this is a, a kind of a specialty wine place, and it's up in the mountains. So it's, it's not like it's right in the middle of, of a big city or somewhere. It, it, it has to, to get up there a little bit. And uh, I think that uh, that's, that's one reason. I think the other reason, oh, I think that is the reason. <laughs> I don't know. I'm speculating, but I'm assuming that generally things up in the mountain areas, because of the costs and getting up uh, up there to them and, and back, I think that I've, I've found that a lot of things seem to be more expensive when you go up. Also, because it's also a tourist area, you know, Blowing Rock is kind of a tourist town, so, uh, and, and people live there. People really do live there, but it it is a little more touristy than some of the other uh, towns up there. So you're going to find the price is a little bit higher. That was okay. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. So let's go ahead and try this wine. Before I do, uh, let me check the chat just a little bit and see what else is going on. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah, there's a couple other things going on here. Um, let's see. Uh Barnstar is in the chat. Oh, Barnstar, it's great to see you. Proper Barnstar is in the chat. Good to see you. He says, I think Square and I consider the coasters like collector's items and are nervous about using them. Well, don't be near, don't be nervous. They'll last for a while. This one's lasted me for almost two years. <laughs> a year and a half, actually. A year and a half. 
Uh, so yeah, yeah, that'll last a while. It's stained up. You can see it's kind of stained up, but it'll last me for a while. Um, Ed, I think you got a couple too, right? And th yes, that square guy says, I have one. Yes, you do. Uh, you, you should have a couple. Uh, I think I sent you a couple um, for you and Darcy. And uh, Nancy's in the chat. Nancy, and I'm assuming Tom too. Nancy says, uh, Happy New Year and Happy New Year to you too. Uh, if it's Nancy or Tom or both of you, either one, it's fine. I'm glad you're here. It's been a while since we've seen you. And uh, I really, uh, really miss you guys. And we got to get together again sometime. We, uh, sometime really soon with all this COVID stuff is subsiding. Um, Square Guy says, oh, I would never use it. Ha, ha, ha. Referring to the, to the coasters. Oh, um, I can send you some more. It might take a couple months to get there. But uh, based on our past experience there. He says, guaranteed to be worth $1,000 in a year's time. Whoa. You think so? I mean, you really think, I don't know if it's worth that. You really think so? Wow, if that's the case, maybe I should uh, hold on to all the rest of these and save them. I'm not going to do that. They're for you guys. They're not for me. They're for you guys. We have plenty of our own. Um, <laughs> but I appreciate that. Limited edition. Yes, it is. Uh, and Barnstar says, Exactly. Um, he, the square guy says, uh, way too expensive to send more just because I'm crazy. <laughs> no, no, you're not crazy. It's fine. It, it, it's fine. You're good. You're good. It's all good. Um, okay. So let's taste this wine real quick and we'll see what it, how it tastes. I'm going to give it a, a whiff too, because I forgot to do that one time. Let me see what we got here. Hmm. Ah, I'm tasting a wow, a little, a little perfumey. It, you know what? It almost tastes a, yeah, almost a little tutti frutti there. That was interesting. Uh, or maybe that's my breath. <laughs> uh, tutti frutti, just a little bit, yeah. It, and it, 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 it's funny because uh, you know all my other tasting notes here, I, I, I didn't really, that wasn't mentioned. It's um. It does. You do get some black and red mix of rack, uh, black and red fruits, but um, it's a little earthy. It, 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 it smells a little earthy, a little oaky. Let's see. Wow. Wow. Um, I want to say elderberry, boysenberry. Uh, yeah, boysenberry. Is what I'm tasting here, blackberry, boysenberry. It is. It is a little oaky. It is a little oaky. Not that's that's to be expected from a Pinot Tosh. Um, but I'm getting a hint of uh, another fruit in here. What is that? Mm. Yeah, um, definitely some blackberry. And uh, yeah, a little hint of boysenberry in there. And um, something else, I can't pick it out just yet. I'm not sure what that is. I can't really pick it out on my untrained non-sommelier tongue because I'm an everyman. I'm not a sommelier. Um, a little smoky, a little smoky, not, not a lot. Uh, I think some places said that, that, that it was smoky. Uh, they were saying that it was a little leathery, but I'm not getting that. It, it is somewhat earthy, though. Hmm. It's it's a little medium. It's it's kind of medium to to uh, full body, but it, it it's not as I don't think it's as bold as it looks. It's it's not the boldest wine I've had. It's it's a little on the light side. It it actually go down it goes down fairly light. Um, surprised. It starts off with some bold flavors, but then it finishes. It finishes light. I like this. I like this. And it, and it's rather it's rather smooth. There there's some tannin in here, but it's not um, it's not a lot. It's sort of I, I wouldn't I'm not even sure it's really medium tannin. I guess it's kind of a medium, some uh, maybe may, there's some tannins in here, but it's it's not a lot. It is a dry wine, but it is not it it on the tongue when you first close your mouth and you taste it. There's a hint of sweetness on it. There is a hint of sweetness. But then as you open your mouth and let the air in as it comes down, it is quite dry. So, um, yeah. And it's very smooth. It, 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 in my opinion, it's, it, for, a, 
It has some tannin in it, but for a wine with tannin in it, it's actually fairly smooth. Uh, I want to say it's not really silky smooth, but it is. It goes down easy. It does, and yeah, it um, it, it's a little smoky, a little oaky. Not a whole lot, but it should go good with some of these these uh, uh, these little samples that I have here. So let's try it with a couple samples. Before I do, let's check the chat one more time, and I don't want to forget anyone in the chat. Uh, quiet on uh, YouTube tonight. Uh, let's see. Whoop. What did I just do here? Okay. <laughs> Threw me off of uh, Facebook for a moment. Let, uh, if anyone sees that we're having troubles on Facebook, let me know right away. I don't think we should, but it, it's possible. Anything can happen. And um, that square guy says, uh, a little crazy. Uh, Barnstar is crazier, to be fair. And Barnstar says that's true. Well, we're having a little back and forth here with you guys, right? <laughs> I think it's all good, though. They're old friends. That's fine. Let's see what we have here. Now we have, we're going to try it with, now this is kind of wine, a Pinotage wine can go good with a number, it's, it's, in a way it's like a Pinot Noir, Pinot, Pinot Noir, Pinot Noir, I haven't had that much yet, honestly. I just barely opened the bottle. Um, so it, it, it has a lot of the characteristics of a Pinot Noir um, and some of a Sasson grape and there's a reason for that and we're going to go into that in a few minutes after I, I go into tasting but there's a reason why it should go pretty well with the steak but it would also good, go good with some uh, some game year meats I think and some uh, it'll go good with uh, some barbecue and uh, I, I asked my wife for some barbecue sauce and I was going to try it with that but I think she forgot to put it on there uh, we, <laughs> so we're just going to do it without the barbecue sauce but the steak's getting a little cold and this one's a little bit, oh man, mm -mm. excuse me, got a piece of gristle in there, mm. okay, it's a good steak, as I said, it was a little, that piece was a little grisly, <laughs> sorry folks, okay, uh, it's still a good steak though, let's see how it pairs with this steak, yes folks, this is live, errors and all. It's all live. Mm. Mm. It does, you know, the smokiness in this wine brings out the smoky flavor in the steak nicely. I think it complements it nicely. It actually kind of blends in. It actually blends in a little bit and just kind of enhances the smokiness. I like this. It's very good. It's good. Let me clear the palate. We're going to try it with the smoked turkey because if it worked good with that, it should work good with the smoked turkey. And um, the smoked turkey is compliments, courtesy of, well, we bought it, so it wasn't free. It's from Honey Baked Ham. I love their smoked turkey, smoked turkey breast. Mmm. It's good, so good. You know, just uh, yesterday. These are leftovers, by the way. It's all leftovers, except the cheese. They're kind of leftover, too. <laughs> all right. Oh, yeah. It complements the smoked turkey very nicely. I like that. I like that very much. It's, it's very good. I enjoy that. I would try another piece, but uh, I'd be sitting here all night eating. I don't think you'd appreciate that too much. Let's uh, clear the palate. Again, let's try it with the cheese. Now, this time, I'm going to try it with the cheddar. I'm not expecting any complications with this cheddar. I think it should be really good. It's just my expectation. So far, I'm liking this wine. I'm liking this so far. Let's see. Mm, the cheddar's really good, too. Mm. Wow. It made a nice, creamy cheddar even creamier. Okay, I like that. I like that. Good with creamy cheddar. Let me clear the palate one more time. This time, I'm going to have to use a cracker. Because i got cheese. I got cheese broth. TMI right there. Okay. All right. Let's try it now. Drum roll, please. With the Trader Joe's Double Cream Gouda. This should be very good. I like this. 
I'll need to pour some more wine though. I see. How it works with double cream gouda. It's another winner. That's a no-brainer right there. Another winner right there, folks. The double cream gouda and the pinotage wine. Nice, nice uh, pairing. I like that. We haven't had a we haven't had a miss on that double cream gouda yet. And by the way, uh, I think I showed a picture of it last week, but just in case you weren't uh, there to see it, this is what it looks like. You go down to Trader Joe's. This is the Trader Joe's double cream gouda. This is what we purchase it locally here. But this is what it looks like in the package. You, if you have nearby a Trader Joe's, um, walk, don't run, or run, don't walk to your Trader Joe's. And if you like cheese and you like wine, or wine and cheese, or any combination thereof, and, uh, and, and pick yourself up one of these. Now, once again, I'm not a shill for Trader Joe's. I just like some of their food. Good stuff. That's the uh, Trader Joe's Creamy Gouda. All right, let's pour some more of this wine. Go and check in the chats, and then let's talk about some birthdays and anniversaries and sci-fi movies and all that kind of good stuff. Because we've got, I got a jam-packed show here, and I know I tend to go off on, on tangents. But I'm going to try not to make this too long. Uh, you know how that goes. Our, our New Year's Eve show turned out to be two and a, two and a half hours. This is the longest. That New Year's Eve show was the longest stream I have ever done to date so far. I don't want to top that tonight. I mean, honestly, uh, I need some time with the family and uh, time to get some rest tonight. So I don't want to be up all night with that. But well, well, um, let's see how we can get through this. Uh, let's see. The uh, I'm going to catch up on the chat here in just a minute. Barnstar says, "Oh, a sommelier is a wine steward." Never knew that. Yes, it is. You know, the the, the only difference between and I'm an every man. A, a sommelier is a, a sommelier, but the, the the only thing about a sommelier, the only difference between a sommelier and the rest of us is that they have trained palates it's it's their own trained palates but they're but they are they are subjective even to them they're subject it's subjective palates so i don't necessarily i don't necessarily go with the recommendations of all these wine experts because they may have a trained palate but uh their palate doesn't necessarily match mine or yours or anyone else's so uh, just because they like it, you might not. Just because you like it, they might not. It's it's still a personal choice, still a personal taste. Um, so you know, at the end of the day, you go with what you like. Go with what what you think is good for you. That's that's my philosophy on it. Uh, let's see. Proper proper Barnstar says, "Yeah, we're old rivals." Uh, oh, uh, you and and uh, and the square guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we're old rivals like uh, Daniel Russo and Johnny Lawrence from The Karate Kid. <laughs> that uh, that's uh, that series is getting a lot of life. Uh, uh, and uh, where is it streaming? Netflix. I haven't really kept up with it. I think it's Netflix. I think we're more like eighty. Oh, the square guy says I'm, I think we're more like Alien and the Predator. <laughs> I hope not. Or Jason Voorhees and Freddy Krueger. Oh, please no. Definitely not like those guys. Uh, <laughs> definitely no. Um, <laughs> Barnstar says, yes, even better. Um, that score guy says, I'm Freddy because I live in your dreams, Barnstar. And score guy says, does Trader Joe ship to Australia? That's a good question. That's a question you have to ask the folks at Trader Joe's. Um, I, I believe they're based in California. Uh, I think around the Pasadena area somewhere. And I think that's the, the original store there is in Pasadena. In fact, I think the first time I ever went into Trader Joe's was when we were visiting my sister, uh, Gina, uh, there in Pasadena, when she lived uh, there, and uh, she took us to Trader Joe's. I think it was the first time I'd ever been in one. It was, it was interesting. Um, that last, oh, Barnstar says, that last show was amazing. My brother called halfway through, and I ended up talking to him for three full hours, a record of our own, actually. Wow. Well, I hope you said uh, Happy New Year to him for me. I remember you were, you, were, you got on the phone there. But, um, that score guy says, when is he going to make an appearance in Rick's chat? <laughs> Anytime he wants. Anytime he wants. And let's see what else we got going here. Not very quiet on Facebook tonight and quiet on YouTube. Speak up. Tell me, what's, uh, tell me how you're doing, uh, Nancy, Tom, Ed. Uh, tell me what you're doing. Ed, you can open a beer. I know you drink beer. Yeah, you open up a beer. Have, a have some tea if you want. 
Earl Grey, hot, cold, whatever you want. Just join me in and, and drink with me. So we're going to talk about some sci-fi here shortly. So um, where was I? Oh, yes, we did that. Let's do a few birthdays. Don't have a whole lot tonight, so it should be pretty pretty simple. Let's start the fireworks up. We've got some birthdays going. First birthday toast I want to give is to my good friend Ed Panis. This is the other Ed, uh, Ed Anthony and Ed Panis, the, the two Eds that are often in the chat. This one's for Ed Panis. He, uh, as a matter of fact, he's not here tonight. Now, he was here uh, for New Year's, and he actually won a book. He actually, I think he won uh, one of the 500 plus dad jokes books that we were giving out uh, as prizes uh, last, uh, uh, d during the New Year's show. And um, he is, I don't think he's here, Man, he might check in, I don't know, but he and uh, his wife Shelly are out celebrating his birthday, which actually technically isn't until Monday, I don't think. But, uh, and that's what we're, we're going to toast him now. This is my good friend Ed. Ed, here's to you. Happy birthday. And may you have many, many, many more. This is from my good friend Ed Panis. He's one of the hosts of the um, Selling Sarasota podcast. I think he dropped his link in here on, uh, Saturday, uh, Saturday night, on uh, Thursday night uh, on the New Year's celebration. You can go back and check that out. Check out his show. It's, it's pretty, his and Shelly's show. They, they're real estate agents in Sarasota, Florida, but they uh, they talk a lot of, about a lot of things, about a, lo a lot of the local culture in Sarasota and things like that. It's a lot of fun. I, I enjoy enjoy listening to their show. Um, the second one I want to give out to, the second uh, birthday toast, is also to my sister-in-law, Benny, and I gave her a big send-up on Saturday night. I'm not going to rehash all that, but I want to say to Benny, because your birthday is also Monday on the 4th. Your, your birthday and Ed's birthday, same day, the 4th of January. Here's to you, Benny. Happy, happy birthday. And may you have many, many, many more. A toast to my sister-in-law, Benny, in Sean. Um, Gordon, I toasted you too, although I was a week ahead on that for Gordon Firemark. His birthday is uh, next Saturday. But we're going to toast. We're going to have a big toast for Gordon on Saturday because that's his actual birthday. So we'll, we'll save that one for, for that. But Gordon, if you're watching... Uh, happy birthday. I have to toast you again. Why not? Hey. There we go. And by the way, if you're just tuning in here, we're drinking the Den. This is a 2019 Pinotage wine. So far, I'm really liking this wine. This is from South Africa. And we're going to learn a little bit about the Pinotage grape here in just a moment. Before we do that, let's uh let's toast the let's toast some of the National Days. We've got National Days because there's some fun National Days coming up here. January 2nd, which is today, for another hour and 15 minutes, more or less. January 2nd is National Buffet Day. I think we did toast this on, uh, on New Year's, but I'm going to toast it again. National Buffet Day. Uh, National Cream Puff Day. It's National Personal Trainer Awareness Day, for obvious reasons, because after all the the, the holiday uh, stuffing we've stuffed ourselves with. We all need personal trainers, don't we, of some sort. So, uh, yeah. And, uh, and January 2nd is also National Science Fiction Day. This is why we're talking about science fiction tonight, folks. Today is National Science Fiction Day. Now, all these days come from the nationaldaycalendar.com. Nationaldaycalendar.com. Uh, my friend Marlo Anderson is the CEO and proprietor of nationaldaycalendar.com. The 2021 calendars are out. You can purchase them. They're like a, something like $15 a piece, I think. Um, I have a, two of them on the way. One of them is going to, who won it last week? Was it uh, Barnstar? Was it you? I think it was you. Would it? I think it was. Going by memory here. And uh, the memory is, is fading along uh, the farther down in the bottle I go. So, uh, yeah, so the 2021 calendars are out. I've heard they're really good, and I had the 2020 calendar. We gave a couple of those away last year and uh, enjoyed it. Enjoy the calendar. Looking forward to this one. Anyway, National Science Fiction Day is today, so we'll talk about some sci-fi in just a little bit. I'll drink to that. Tomorrow, January 3rd, Sunday, January 3rd, 2021, is National Chocolate-Covered Cherry Day. Who doesn't like chocolate-covered cherries? Okay, except for my daughter, Tia. She's not big on cherries, but I love cherries. I love fresh cherries. Uh, 
But chocolate covered cherries, oh yes, rich, rich, but good. And I'll bet they go good with these wines too. I bet it. I should have had a chocolate covered cherry. I bet go excellent with this wine. Chocolate go is good with red wine anyway. Cherries, you know, there's often cherry in uh, flavor in the wine. The combination I think should be awesome. Here's the National Chocolate Covered Cherry Day. National Drinking Straw Day. Oh well, I don't know. Maybe you, you can toast that if you want to. But tomorrow's uh, tomorrow's also National Fruitcake Toss Day. Yes, that's the day that we toss all those fruit cakes that we received and maybe that uh, have been regifted to us. That sort of thing. Although, if they're not, if it's not too old, maybe you can still, instead of tossing, you can just re-gift it to someone else, and they can get re-gift it to someone else next year, and then maybe after a few years of that, then maybe they can toss it. National, National Fruitcake Toss Day. I'll drink to that. There you go. There are national national days. You know, I, I was actually on Twitter. I was looking at uh, wine spec. I meant to mention that. I, uh, to mention this uh, on New Year's, but on New Year's uh, Eve, just before the show, and, and I'm connected with uh, Wine Spectator on Twitter, and they had posted uh, a news release, and this is not a joke, this is for real. They they had posted a news release, which I have a copy of here, that uh, they were saying there was a wine crime. Uh, this was on um, uh, New Year's Eve, and they said that French police busted a crime ring. I'm just reading this directly from Wine Spectator. French police busted a rhyme, uh, a rhyme. Yeah. I'm not capping this, okay? Uh, French police busted a crime ring allegedly responsible for stealing and trafficking millions in top Burgundy and more. We're talking about Burgundy wines. And, oh man, this gets gross. And an illicit wine producing facility was found in an Alabama sewage treatment facility. You have to go to uh, Wine Spectre to get those stories and more. But oh my goodness! So, so a crime ring that was stealing and trafficking millions in Burgundy and other wines, and an illicit wine producing facility was found in an Alabama sewage treatment facility. That's just something I don't want to think about. Check my wine. How were they? Were they fermenting? I I don't I don't even want to go there. I don't even want to think about it. That's just that that uh, just the the thought. Just no, nah, I don't. I'm, I'm not going there. Okay, so yeah, definitely not. Okay, so um, what do we have going on in the in the chat? Uh, my wife Cheese in the chat. She's uh, she's saying Happy New Year. I think she's talking to Nancy there, but Happy New Year to everybody. Let's see. Nothing going on on YouTube. YouTube is quiet. But uh, on Twitch, that's where the action's happening here tonight. Uh, Barnstar says, I know a long convo. I don't know. Oh, uh, he's talking to the square guy. <laughs> square guy says, I'm having tea. That's good to have. Tea is good for you. It's a, it's a, a great drink. It's, and I drink quite a bit of tea myself. I do. And I like loose leaf tea. Actually, I like to brew it loose leaf if I can. Uh, Barnstar says, did I win something? This is the first I've heard of this. Uh, I, I'm not sure. I think, did, did I, uh, did, I have to go back and double check, but I, I'm, I'm checking to see if that if you were one of the winners here. I, I'm just going by my poor memory. Um, Millicast is in the chat. Good to see you, Millicast, uh, Millicast, and thanks for being here. Stick around. We're going to have a great discussion on sci-fi. We're going to learn uh, 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 about some of this. Pinotage, great. We're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to have some fun. And it's an open chat, too. It's an open chat, so feel free to open, openly chat. <laughs> Cambridge says, all those poor fruitcakes always getting uh, re-gifted and never eaten. Ha <laughs> ha. You know, um, and Square Guy says, send me your fruitcakes. You like fruitcakes? Um, I, I have a little bit of, I talked about this before. My wife and I, every once in a while, will forget all about the fact that uh, how much we don't like fruitcake. And we'll go buy one to say, you know, I forgot what fruitcake tastes like. And then we'll buy a fruitcake and then we'll take a couple of slices and everybody have a slice of fruitcake. And they go, okay, now I remember why we don't buy this uh, 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 very often. So, <laughs> uh, Barnstra says, why can't fruitcake be like cherry, blackberry, and apple pie combined or something like that? I think that's basically what it is. It's, it's kind of like if you had uh, bread pudding with all kinds of 
crap in it. That's that's uh, with, you know with all kinds of uh, of uh, fruity junk. That that's kind of a, a fruit cake is what it is. I think that's what it is. It's very old bread pudding with a lot of a lot of uh, uh, fruit remnants in it. Or or, or well, how should I say <laughs> uh, fruit. Uh, what do they do? You know, like what whatever's left over from the fruit, fruit droppings. I don't know. <laughs> uh, Barnstar says, I won the joke book, but that was a month ago. I was distracted with my phone call during the New Year's show. Sorry. I think it was because you were you were pandering to us about how uh, about your New Year's resolution watching all of us. <laughs> I think that's what did it. If I remember right, I don't know. We'll see. I, I have to go back and double check, but I, I think that's what I think that's what happened. So, uh, <laughs> fruit remnants. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, that's basically what a fruit cake is, isn't it? I don't know. Ed, do you like fruit cake? Tom, Nancy, you all like fruit cake. I'm not a, I, I can eat a, a little bit of fruit cake, but it, first of all, it's kind of rich. And second, I don't like it when they put a lot of nuts in it. I mean, it's okay with just the, the, the fruits in it. And of course they're usually dried fruits and it's all chewy and stuff. And, uh, okay. I want to go. I want to get a fruit cake just so I can go toss it somewhere. Um, yeah, fruit remnants. <laughs> All right. So uh, where are we now? Okay. Uh, I've got my list. I got my list. Oh yeah. You know what? One of the things I do here on my uh, my channel. I'm getting jumping ahead of myself, aren't I? Okay. Let's let's not jump ahead there. Let's uh, let's stick to the protocol here, right? Let's skip this. Uh, stick to the script. All right. So I was going to tell you a little bit about the pinotage grape before we got into the more fun stuff. Um, to learn a little bit about pinotage because a lot of people don't know what pinotage is. They've never really heard of it, and it, it's not as widely distributed. It's a fairly young grape, as I said. Here are a few facts about the pinotage grape that I had compiled. Um, what Pinotage is, it is a combination or a blending of uh, Pinot Noir and Hermitage, which is also known as Sasson. Uh, and, and those two grapes basically, uh, well, basically what happened was it originated in South Africa in the mid-1920s, and it was invented by Abraham Isaac Perel. Now what he did was he had basically grafted a Pinot Noir and, and uh, a Hermitage grape or a Sasson grape uh, together and, and grew some of these, these vines. And the vines had been sitting around for a while and it was something that he was just kind of playing around with. And then it got, uh, he was, uh, he was in a university or something, he was doing some research and he, and he did this for a while and he had them growing in, in his yard outside his house. And then uh, he left, and they kind of got forgotten about, and then these things kind of start growing wild in his house. And then um, I think one of his associates, I believe C.J. Theron, about 10 years later, he, uh, he came across this, and he, and he knew what they were he, because he, known, he had known uh, uh, Perold, and he knew what, what he had been working on, and so he, he had uh, saved them. They, they were going to raise the whole the whole garden there. They were just going to cut everything down and get rid of it. And he saw that. He caught them in time. So he saved the vines. He saved the vines and he transplanted them and brought them back. And then he grafted it. And of course, they were not in great shape because they're kind of growing wild and they were, you know, in the midst of cutting stuff back. So he grafted them some new vines. This was 10 years later. Grafted new vines. And then uh, the grapes, the resulting grapes, they liked the grapes. So he, uh, they started making wine from these grapes. And the wine was first, and then they liked the wines. They, they developed the wines from them. And then the wine was first introduced to the public um, in 1941 uh, during, during World War II. And that's how it happened. And, and they, they didn't really take hold as well. It's, this is the South, they, they kind of uh, stayed in South Africa for a while. And then later on, they, they kind of came to the United States and some other countries. Uh, and they were, uh, well it was well received. It was uh, the, the wines were very well received, and today the grapes are grown primarily in South Africa, where they originated, and in Brazil, in Canada, in Israel, New Zealand, and the United States, and in Zimbabwe. Now I didn't know Zimbabwe. They they've got a wine they've got wine production in Zimbabwe. Who knew? But uh, they do. Anyway, that's the history of the Pinotage grape. The grape has a very interesting history. It's a good grape. They make some excellent wines with this that they've really 
really uh, tweaked and 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 uh, further developed over the the, the uh, decades. And uh, I think some of these wines have won some awards. Really, really fine wines. This one, I like this one. This is actually, I, I like this Pinotage. I developed, I tried my first Pinotage wine back in, what episode was it? was ah, It's buried back there in all the bottles. Yeah, I think it was like episode 12 or 13 or something. And I tried one for the first time, and I really enjoyed it. As a matter of fact, I think my first Pinotage came from... I think I ordered it. I think I ordered it a special order because I wanted to know what Pinotage wine was like because I heard some things about it. And I think I'd ordered it from Wine Store, our local wine store down here. They, and they ordered me a couple of bottles. And then I tried them on, I opened them both up various times on the uh, various episodes of the stream and tried them. They were all very good. And I developed a, a, a nice, I developed a taste for, for the Pinotage wines. I really enjoy them. But I like Pinot Noirs. As you know, I've opened many Pinot Noirs. I like a good Sasson. Um, and so the, the blend is, it's a natural blend. It's not like you're blending two different wines together. This is a grape that is a blend uh, that's basically a, a hybrid of the two. And it makes a really good natural wine. So I really like these wines. And I like this one. This is a very good, uh, very good wine, by the way. So uh, I, I recommend it. I recommend this wine so far. There will be a final summary at the end of the show. But uh, so far, um, my thoughts on this is it's actually pretty good. So uh, Barnstar says, Oh, uh, I was being super genuine about that New Year's resolution. I didn't expect anything from that, but cheers. I, once again, I, I have to double check. I have to go back and, and watch this segment again to, to make sure that uh, uh, I had everybody correctly as who to who won what. But I think, I think that's what happened. I think I have to double check. You can go back and double check for me if you want. As a matter of fact, I have, I have my team here. Everybody's here. You go back and check that section. I think it was the last, somewhere in the last uh, 40 minutes of the show. I think it's when we did somewhere in the last 40, 50 minutes. Um, check and, and, and just to verify, maybe you can tell, uh, verify for me who won what. I'm pretty sure I've got it written down somewhere, but right offhand, I, right offhand, I don't have it in front of me. So we'll get them over there. She said, I'm waiting on the calendars. The calendars are going to take a while to get here. I've got the dad joke books and, uh, and Ed, if you're, you're listening later and you know, I've got one going out to you soon, shortly, as soon as they get to the post office. Okay. So what do we have here? We've got, um, well, yeah, we talked about the grape and we're going to go into some sci-fi here in just a moment, but first there's something that I want to tell you about. I, um, you know, that on Twitch, and for those of you who are not familiar with Twitch, it's another, it's a, it's a streaming platform. A lot of gamers is primarily set up for gamers streaming, but a lot of other folks have gotten into it too. There's a just chatting channel where a lot of people get in there and just chat. There is a podcast channel where a lot of podcasters get in and stream their live shows and their podcasts like this one. And then there's a food and drink one. Now I'm not in the podcast category. I could put myself there, but I'm actually in the food and drink category. And the food and drink category is pretty cool because you go up if you like cooking shows in particular, and you like dining shows where they're reviewing dining, you know, uh, 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 dining out and things like that. But most of the cooking shows, you've got a lot of people doing their own cooking shows, and some really really interesting shows there. And um, there's, a, there's a whole there's a whole section for that where the people are, are doing cooking and of course uh, as I mentioned before um, the Square Guy and Darcy uh, are, are have their own cooking show that they do. Also, there is one there is a channel for uh, movies like <laughs> looking at movies kind of like Mystery Science uh, uh, you know uh, mis science, uh, Mystery Science Theater three thousand. <laughs> I'm pouring some more wine. Okay, so uh, anyway, th th that, that kind of style. And uh, there are some uh, other channels there too. But th there's one that uh, is really interesting. There's a, there's a whole section devoted to art. So you get a lot of people who are into art and painting. And they'll sit there on these streams and people get in and watch them paint, watch them draw. And they'll chat with everybody, and you can watch it. And it's really soothing. Ed, if you haven't checked this out, you might might be interested in some of this because it's very much, if you like Bob Ross, now, uh, it's very much like Bob Ross, some of these are. When they get on and they're drawing and they're 
painting and a couple of people like uh, Sarah is painting. Uh, there's one person I watch sometimes. She'll play some music, some soft music in the background while she's painting, and she'll be talking to her, her uh, to the people in the chat with her and just you know, bantering about stuff while she's painting. And there's another guy there. He uh, he paints these wonderful portraits of pets. I think I mentioned this before, but he, he you can send him a picture of your pet, dog, cat, mongoose, whatever it is that you want to your rat or whatever you have a picture uh, painting made of, and he will make a painting, an original painting from that picture uh, and, and send it back to you. And he charges for that, of course, but but uh, he does this on commissions. But uh, he's wonderful at it, and it's fun to watch him. It, it really is. It's just it's just amazing to watch. So, uh, you know, now Bob Ross has a channel on Twitch. Uh, you know, Bob Ross is... They, they have a channel. They rerun all of Bob Ross's old show on Twitch. And so I um, I actually host some of these channels when I'm not streaming on Twitch just to keep my channel going, just to keep, uh, to keep it lively. I will host other people's channels when they're streaming. The Square Guy, I host... Uh, the Square Guy hosts your channel when I'm not streaming. So when you're on, or you and Darcy are on, I, I host your channel on there. I host a few other channels from a few other people that are uh, that streaming when I'm not there. Uh, Bob Ross is one of those because he's uh, because they do a 24-hour channel where he's pretty much so he's streaming all the time. And uh, my family and I have are old Bob Ross fans. We we watch Bob Ross ever since we, uh, kids were young and they were watching Bob Ross when they were little and my daughter Tia who of course into the art she always liked to watch him it's very relaxing very soothing and he has a very very soothing and calming demeanor you know in, in, in painting and um, so w when I saw that he had a channel I went ahead and uh, I said yeah I'll host this channel when I'm not doing because I think it's kind of cool a lot of people like him it's very popular very popular so um you know, and Twitch. I have my issues with Twitch. You know, because you know, as you know, as as you know, I turned down the opportunity to be a fit Twitch affiliate, even though I, I, not long after I started doing it, I, I qualified to be a Twitch affiliate. I turned it down because of a couple of stipulations there that, uh, that uh, I didn't agree with in their contract. So that's why that's why I didn't. Thanks, Jeff Bezos. Now, if you know you know who Jeff Bezos is, Jeff, Jeff Bezos, of course, is the billion super super billionaire who owns Amazon.com, and Amazon owns Twitch, or they, they do now. They bought Twitch a couple of years ago, so they own Twitch. So, uh, you know, and, and I participate in a lot of the stuff on Twitch, but I can't be a a uh, or I could be a an affiliate, but I'm not going to do that. Uh, because my my viewers and my listeners come first, okay, over any monetization on this, all right? And that's the way it is. So uh, where was it going with this? Okay, well, here's where I was going with this. Um, so uh, this morning, this morning I get an email notification. You know, whenever a channel goes live and that sort of thing, you'll get an, uh, an email notification, something like DS Koopa's, uh, it's somebody else I follow there uh, who has a, uh, a store where he sells stuff, like kind of QVC-like store. He sells video games. Uh, DS Koopa is live on Twitch, or uh, the Donut Guy is live on, on, on Twitch, or, or uh, Sarah's Painting, or, or uh, who else? Uh, you know, a, a lot of the other streamers that, that I follow. You know, that Square Guy is live on Twitch. So I get an email notification this morning that says from Twitch saying, Bob Ross is live on Twitch. And the first thing I said was, no, he's not. He's dead. He's been gone for over 15 years. Um, and that's why I don't trust anything Jeff Bezos says. That's why. And I'll drink to that. You know, uh, by the way, Bob Ross's paintings, uh, it was always fun to watch him paint. Bob Ross's paintings were, were always, I think they were always kind of poignant to me. And occasionally, maybe a little moving. You know, he'd paint all these really nice 
landscapes and stuff with the happy little trees and all that. Now we're always they were sometimes poignant, but um, and, and then occasionally a little a little moving. But today, his collection of still life art is still moving. I'll let you think about that one for a second. By the way, I saw an Amazon ad just before the show started, and um, the ad says, save on Bob Ross Chia Pet. And I said, uh, I say don't buy it and save even more. But here's the thing. The Chia Pet was just such a natural for Bob Ross. Um, I mean, let's face it. Come on, Chia Pet. You know, Chia, the grow stuff. and Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that would have been the first thing I thought of for a Chia Pet was say, hey, let's get Bob Ross's face on a Chia Pet and and, and have him grow some hair. Um, To me, the Chia Pet is just... It's, it's a happy little plant, you know. You, you could get two, so we'll have a little friend, and you just grow these little Chia Bob Ross plants. It's really cool. I, that's a natural. I think that's a natural. I, I like that. But uh, anyway, enough Bob Ross stuff. <laughs> Ed says, which Ed gets a, well, what is it? Which Ed gets a, 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 oh, gets a dad joke book. Oh, well, we're talking about uh, Ed, um, Ed Panis, who he won one last week at the, um, I mentioned that Ed Panis won one last week at the uh, the New Year's party. Um, and uh, it, and I tell you what, though, you, you could have an, uh, a chance to to uh, win a dad joke book uh, next week, because I'm going to give another one away next week. But I have some other stuff I can get away here, too. Um, well, let's talk about some sci-fi. Let's talk about some sci-fi here, because I think it's time. Pastime. time. Otherwise, we're going to go, whoa, we're, we're already in an hour and seven minutes. Uh, let's see. Uh, Barnstar says, multi-grape red blends are pretty exciting. Yes, I think so. I think so. Um, he says, I'll check out the VOD in the next day or so, but no worries. It was fun just hanging out on New Year's Eve. It was. I have a great time. I had a tough time. That's why it was the longest show. You know, originally on New Year's, I was going to originally do an hour and a half an hour and a half New Year's special. And I was going to shut it down before the midnight uh, toll. And um, before the ball dropped. Not because I wanted to watch it on TV, because I, I really, really didn't care. From what I heard, it, it didn't really miss anything anyway. Uh, I heard Cindy Lauper had a really interesting performance. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I could, I could have missed that. But... Um, where was it going? Oh yeah. So, uh, but, but uh, my kids were saying, "Oh, well, you're not gonna, you're not gonna uh, bring in the new year." And I said, "Well, you know, I got to thinking about it." And I said, "Well, you know, what the hey? Let's do that." So I was gonna make it two hours, and then I was gonna cut it off at like two hours and five minutes, and make the last five minutes the promotional time that we did, you know, where everybody could throw in their links to their websites and, and promote their, their uh, whatever it is they have, their their channels or websites, their you know, um, podcasts, their uh, books, or whatever, whatever it is they want to promote. So uh, when I got, when we got into that, we were still doing other stuff, and we were giving away other stuff and doing New Year's resolutions, and it just dragged on and on, and I kept talking on and on, and my wife says, "You, we can't shut you up, <laughs> basically. And before I know it, we had gone two hours and almost 40 minutes, so... Uh, and then I realized, you know, maybe I better turn this stream off. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that was, uh, that was the longest I've ever streamed so far. That Square Guy, though, he did a stream. You did a stream uh, a couple of weeks ago, just before the holidays, where you were uh, doing a game show. I was there for that. That was a lot of fun. And you were streaming for, what, five hours? Almost six hours? And then after you did that, you got off and did another stream, didn't you? That was almost six hours, I think. That was a long stream. I was like, you know what? After that two-and-a-half-hour stint, and I made a slight reference to where, yeah, you know, i got to go pee. I really did. I mean, <laughs> TMI there, but I really had, I mean, two-and-a-half hours sitting here and drinking wine and, and stuff. It's, uh, yeah, it was, uh, I had to finish that show. If I looked a little bit in distress at the last minute or two, it was because I was. <laughs> But enough about me. 
Okay, so Barnstar says, glad you kept the stream going. It was a great surprise. And uh, Mr. Gobi says, hi from France. Well, hi right back at you, Mr. Gobi. I'm glad you're here. Please stick around. We're actually, um, I drink a lot of French wine, but that's not what we're drinking tonight. The, what we're drinking tonight is this one. We're drinking a, a Pinotage. This is from South Africa. But it has, you know, if you know, that's a blend of Pinot Noir and Sasson, you know, French grapes. So, uh, you know. I'm glad you're here, though. Stick around. We're gonna talk. Let's talk about some sci-fi. It's getting late. Let's talk about some sci-fi. That's what we're here for, right? Um, because today is National Sci-Fi Day, and Ed says, uh, Ed says Jenny from Sara Lee used to paint like Bob Ross. She lived just down the street from me and had paintings all over her entryway in her house. Oh my goodness, Ed! You you did it again. You did it again. You jogged my memory again. Save the day again, as as Ed always does. Jenny, that's who it was. Jenny, do you remember? Do you remember sometime back? And you know, I I I tell my Disney stories, my stories about my days at Disney, right? Uh, so from time to time on the show. I did a lot of things in my life. You know, I worked at Disney. I worked at uh, in television. Did, worked in broadcasting for fourteen years. I had I worked in IT for for a number of years working for Dell and Gateway and then I had my open my own computer store and I had that for a long time and then uh, we moved up here to North Carolina and uh, of course now I'm working for By Two Way Radios. Um, did a lot of different things but uh, my days at Disney, classic and I've, I've told a lot of the stories Ed's, Ed and I have both regaled some of our uh, have regaled you with some of uh, our stories at Disney uh, and I was trying to recall uh, a couple of things. The the lady, the cake lady. The, I said that we had a lady there who was uh, really, really talented at decorating cakes, but I couldn't remember her name. And that's who it was. It was Ginny, Ginny from Sara Lee. We had a Sara Lee Bakery there at Disney. We had a this was at the Village, the Walt Disney World Village. That's what it was called at the time. I've gone through many iterations of names and and things like that, but. Originally, though, there was a uh, building there that was uh, in basically in three parts. There was the Borden's Cone Shop and uh, Ice Cream Fountain uh, was in the first part, and then there was the the uh, there was the uh, the the restaurant the uh, the restaurant there in the middle that uh, also was a we served a lot of different dinners and ice cream sundays and things like that. And then in the back was the uh, Sara Lee Bakery. And uh, that's where Ginny worked. She used to decorate cakes. You could buy cakes from me. We buy all kinds of pastries. And uh, one of my favorites, <laughs> yeah. I can say this now, right, Ed? I mean, uh, at the time, we're not, you weren't, if you worked there, you were not allowed to eat anything unless you were tasting something specifically for a specific reason. For a specific person, a purpose, like if the customer said, "Oh, you know, I, I, I've got some issue with this or whatever," and you're know, just checking something out, or if you were the cook in the back and you were taste testing something, but otherwise, that if you were caught eating the food, um, that was grounds for termination. Okay, uh, but that didn't stop a lot of people from eating the food. <laughs> Not really to turn, especially when you're in the bakery all day and you're baking stuff. And boy, that stuff looks so good. I'll tell you what, though. You spend enough time in the cone shop, you don't want to touch another. You don't want to eat any ice cream. And that's what happened with me. I, I spent so much time in that cone shop making thousands of cones and making ice cream sundaes and stuff that I was sick of ice cream. I couldn't, I, I couldn't stand the smell of ice cream for the longest time. I would not touch the stuff for a long time. I think, Ed, you probably felt much the same way. Veranda Pavilion, thank you, Ed. Once again, Ed saves the day, saves my memory. Thank you, Ed, as always. Uh, the Veranda Pavilion was the name of the restaurant. Uh, it actually was the name of the whole thing. The Veranda Restaurant was part of the pavilion. That was the main part of the restaurant there. Thank you, Ed. To Ed. So, anyway, uh, so uh, uh, Ginny... Uh, was the the cake decorator there and uh, they had one thing there that people would pick at they would go by and pick at in the bakery that uh, there was uh, we had some uh, crumb cakes that we'd, we'd make in the bakery you remember this Ed? yeah you probably do 
and they make the crumb cake uh, topping and they keep it in this huge, huge metal uh, container with a cover with plastic wrap so they could sprinkle it on the crumb cakes and stuff. And I, I'm not kidding. People would buy walk by there all the time and snack on that stuff. They weren't supposed to. You know, they go back when nobody's watching them. They didn't have cameras all over the place, or at least we didn't think they had cameras all over the place, although they did around Disney property, and that's another story for another time. But where we were, um, the people would just sneak by all the time and grab a small handful out of there and, and go by and snack on this stuff. I know because I was there. I was at one time I was a lead over there. I was a lead between the cone shop and the bakery. So I'd have to run back and forth between them across the restroom. And um, it, Jenny was kind of a gruff person, at least with me. She could be kind of gruff. I, I don't think she ever really appreciate the fact I, I think she wanted the lead position and then when they 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 made me lead over there uh i don't think she was totally happy with that which I, you know it's okay i understand you know but um uh, uh she was much much older lady but i always thought she was really cool i always thought she was really nice although once again she could be pretty gruff with me uh, but uh, she was the the cake decorator and she was very very good at what she did she was very good very talented and uh, apparently, according to Ed, Jenny used to paint like Bob Ross, and she lived down the street from me and had, a meaning Ed, and had paintings all over her entryway in her house. That I can believe because uh, she was very talented. She was very talented with the cakes. So I got off on a Disney story. We're supposed to be talking about sci-fi. I got off on another Disney story, and that's what we do here on this wine stream because it is a stream of consciousness kind of show. Everybody having trouble with my stories? <laughs> Uh, let me see here. Uh, Cambridge says, personally, I prefer the Golden Girls Chia Pet. <laughs> Am I laughing for all the wrong reasons? I hope not. Uh, Barnstar says, glad you kept the stream going. It was a great surprise. Well, thank you. And uh, Mr. Gobi, please tell me what you're drinking or tell me what you're not drinking or tell me what you like to be drinking. Um Tell me what you like to see me drinking. If I can afford to buy a bottle of it, I'll see if I can drink it too. All right, sci-fi stuff. Let's get to this. Oh, we got to get to this before we close the stream down, right? Okay, so um, the first movie of the year that I happened that I happened to watch. Um, okay, the last movie of the year that we all sat down and watched was Die Hard. And of course, for obvious reasons, right? I, I, as a matter of fact, I was talking to my. Uh, uh, I think my sister Penny had posted something about them watching Dar Die Hard over the holidays because it seemed like, okay, you got to do that. That's the thing to do. Well, we did that too. We sat down and watched uh, Die Hard, the original one, the first one with Bruce Willis. And, uh, yeah, classic. And, and uh, you know, people think of it as a holiday movie, although I, I don't think it was really originally intended to be one. It was an action film. But uh, it, it's, it's, kind of, it's become a holiday movie, you know, pretty much. You know, you've got... You've got, uh, what is it? It's a Wonderful Life on this side, and then on the other side, you have Die Hard. I mean, hey, great combination, right? Perfect combination. Okay. Something for everybody. So uh, the first movie, I, I want to switch gears a little bit, and I said, well, you know, the first mo movie of the new year, I want to sit back. I've got some time off, a few days off. So I said, well, you know, I like to watch a movie, but what I want to watch, something that uh, I just wanted to watch. I didn't want to watch anything too too light. I didn't want to, want to watch anything too deep. I'll tell you what I did. I, I tried to watch Midnight Sky. Okay, this was this move, new movie that came on Netflix. It was a sci-fi film, Midnight Sky. This is the one with, uh, with George Clooney. So George Clooney's in this thing as a starring role. And it doesn't even look like George Clooney at first. You know, you kind of have to really study him, so you go, go, cut through all the beard and everything. I was like, wow, that's George Clooney. Um, <laughs> you know, well, you let himself go. But uh, he did that for, for the movie, apparently. He did that for the part, apparently. So, um, so watching George Clooney and, uh, in this movie... And I get through the first 30 minutes. Now, I get a text. I think the next day I get a text from my friend Pete. Pete uh, gives her. Uh, Pete was one of the guys in The Analyst that we did, the Analyst film that you, you've seen. If you haven't seen it, go back and look at it on the 
previous episodes, we showed the whole film, classic. So, um, so Pete texts me and he says, if you haven't seen Midnight Sky yet, go check it out and then let's get our lawyers. <laughs> now, I mentioned the analyst because that's what he was referring to. And, uh, of course, I'd already seen it, and I, I told him, look, I had a bail on this movie. I watched, like, the first 30 minutes of this movie, and I had a bail on it because it was just, it, it wasn't just boring. It was excruciatingly boring. Now, I've seen my share of films. I've seen my share of art films. I have uh, played uh, the part of judge in a number of film festivals. So I've had to sit through a lot of of films, especially some that were excruciatingly, you know, rather boring and not fun to watch, and, and some that gave me a headache. This was by far probably the most excruciatingly boring film I think I've ever seen. One of the most excruciatingly boring films. It took so long to get anywhere with this film. And I've seen a lot of films that move slow. I like a really good film that moves slow, and I've seen a lot of them, and, and pacing, with slow pacing. And some of those films I actually really enjoy. This was not one that I even enjoyed. This was just painful to just, like, check in your watch every few minutes, kind of excruciatingly boring. Um, so after the first 30 minutes, I just bailed on it, and I said, you know what? I, I don't really care, but okay, let me Google up the premise of this film, find out how it ends, because I didn't want to sit through the whole thing. So I, I you know, I went through, found the, uh, the, prem the, the premise on Wikipedia and, and read through it. I don't want to spoil it for you if you don't, if you, if you're planning to see it, but obviously, I, I mean, from what I'm saying, it's not one that I recommend to go see. So be honest, save yourself two, two hours and 12 minutes, I think is what the film was. To Save yourself two hours and 12 minutes and just go with my, with my synopsis. It was boring, the end, <laughs> you know. Uh, so, yeah, but the, the, the payoff, there really wasn't a payoff, but the payoff that was kind of there, yes, I understand why Pete said the next day, that uh, I'll get our lawyers because um, I just told them don't worry about it because our film it, it, basically it's the ending of the analyst okay and if you haven't seen the analyst save yourself two hours and twelve minutes of this dredge and go watch my six minute and eight minute film the analyst that's the plot of this movie basically um, that's the end plot of this movie okay no spoilers there just go see the film and you've seen it and, and I just saved you two hours and because this is only six minutes long i saved you two hours and six minutes of 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 sheer torture so uh, uh yeah i told him don't worry about it because we did it better and um and it didn't put people to sleep so um <laughs> that was my review of midnight sky uh, uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Did anybody see that movie? Did anybody see? Did anybody like that movie? Um, if you sat through that whole movie, you probably deserve to get something. I'll send you a free corkscrew. My wife gave me these corkscrews to give away. If you sat through that entire movie, and and and, and lived through it, uh, I'll send you a corkscrew. Because <laughs> you're gonna need it to open that bottle of wine to rec to recover from it. I, I honestly. <laughs> I'm being cruel, aren't I? Well, yeah, but uh, it, it's deserved. That was an awful film. Um, so, uh, Barnstone says, yep, saw that one. Can, can't wait to hear your take on it. We just heard it. Barnstone says, so you, did you finish watching Midnight Sky in order to compare it to The Analyst? No, I didn't. Um, I, I, Pete did it for me. Pete did it for me. Um, that was his take on it, was uh, call our lawyers. <laughs> so uh, getting back to, to Facebook here, Ed says, ice cream, you can dish it out, but you can't take it. That's pretty much true. He says, do I remind you of spinoff yet? Uh, no, but we'll, we'll get there. And Ed says, RIP Don Wells, Marianne on Gilligan's Island, COVID-19. Yes, we did toaster. Go back, Ed, go back and watch the New Year's Eve special. You don't have to watch the whole two and a half hours of it, but just go back and watch pieces of it if you want. We did, I did give Don Wells a send-up. 
I did do that. I did toast her in memoriam on that. She was one person that uh, I think uh, we're all going to miss. Mary Ann, we're all going to miss her very much. And you know what? She's still They're still running her promos on MeTV. I, I watch MeTV because, uh, you know, after this stream, I like to go uh, to bed and then sit down and watch uh, old reruns of Perry Mason at midnight. So <laughs> that dates me, doesn't it? Uh, so uh, look, Perry Mason. Okay, this is not sci-fi really. Perry Mason, come on. Hamilton Burger, Ham Burger, come on. If, if you don't know what I'm talking about, go watch an episode of Perry Mason. Ed says, will you talk about Dark Star? I can. I think that's the name of it. It is the name of it. Dark Star is the name of it. It's, it's actually uh, an early O'Bannon film. And uh, it's, uh, it was actually uh, basically a... a uh, a film that came before, if you know, Alien, the first Alien movie, and there's a, there's a little bit, there's a little trivia there with that, with the, the first Alien film. Who saw Alien? Who saw the original Alien? Classic film. I showed it to my son. My son and I sat down and watched it because I said, you know, you got to see it because there are all these memes about Alien. you got you got to see it to, to see what these memes are all about. So um, I showed it to my son. I saw it originally when it came out in the theater way back when. You know, this is a lot of us did in, in my day. Classic sci-fi horror film. Uh, and uh, so we watched it, and then I filled him in. While we were watching it, I filled him in on the, a little bit of trivia there that you may not be aware of, but I'll give it to you now because we're talking about sci-fi trivia, right? Because this is National Sci-Fi Day. I might wind up going long on this, won't I? Probably. So... Because I love sci-fi. I could talk about it for hours, days. My wife can attest to that. So can my kids. So um, Dark Star was a, uh, a, a film, a very, very low-budget sci-fi film that, uh, that uh, was made back in the early 70s. I want to say late 60s, early 70s. And it was basically a satire film. It was about uh, a couple of guys that, that all they do is roam around uh, and blow up old dead planets. Basically, that's what Dark Star is about. And that, that was their job, is to go around and rid the universe of old dead dying planets that, that were uh, going to get in the way or go rogue or whatever, just because they could. So they go around and blow them up. And uh, the Dark Star ship was, was equipped with a, a basically a star killer kind of thing. Well, not star killer, but a, it was kind of like the precursor to uh, to a Death Star, pretty much. It could blow up a planet. So um, in the movie, um, the the lead character's name was was Pinback. That was his name, Pinback. He, he was basically the guy. He was he was kind of a slacker guy that would go around and, and blow up these stars and had nothing better to do with his life. And um, but his name was was uh, Pinback. So in when Alien came when when Alien was was made, and they were writing that. They wrote in a, a little gag about that. Most a lot of people miss unless they know the backstory and they know uh, uh, Dark Star. And uh, there's a scene in Alien where the uh, it was a captain. Somebody takes his his uh, pen, his ballpoint pen, and uh, there's there's some acid dripping from the ceiling down to the floor, and it goes through several decks in the floor. That's what these aliens do. Is they they, their their blood is basically acid, right? So it's dripping, is cutting through the several decks. So he takes his pen and he's scraping off a little bit of this acid off the top, and he puts puts it down. They're talking about, you know, they're kind of inspecting it. And then when he's done, he hands it back to the guy who gave him the pen and says, "Here's your pen back." It was a secret little inside joke, referring to the guy in Dark Star. To the uh, to the pinback character in Dark Star, true, yeah, that's uh, that's that's the way it was always told to me. So um, that's just a little little nonsensical trivia in Aliens. Pinback from Dark Star. Ed, did you know that? You might have known that. <laughs> Dark Star is a classic sci-fi film. Yes, a lot of classic star sci-fi films I've seen. I've been wanting to show my son. Uh, 
Do you know that that Leslie Nielsen was in a sci-fi movie? Anybody know uh, the sci-fi movie Leslie Nielsen was in? This was in the 60s, or late 50s, early 60s. I can't remember the actual date. Um, Forbidden Planet. Forbidden Planet starred Leslie Nielsen and and, uh, Walter Pidgeon. And uh, who else was in it? It was, uh, was it Connie Francis? Yeah. Somebody, uh, and and uh, it's been a while since I've seen the film. But it was shot in Cinemascope, basically a widescreen, super widescreen. Really cool, cool movie. And uh, Leslie Nielsen, he, he plays a straight guy in this film. He played the leading man. And uh, pretty cool to see Leslie Nielsen in his prime and doing things, you know, on a, in a, on a spaceship and stuff. It was pretty cool. Disney did the animation for that film, by the way. They did all the animation effects for uh, for Forbidden Planet. It was an MGM film, but they hired Disney to go in and do their effects for them because they really weren't equipped for doing some of that. And uh, Forbidden Planet uh, also featured Robbie the Robot. That was the introduction of Robbie the Robot. And you have seen Robbie in a lot in different iterations of Robbie in a lot of different films, a lot of different movies. Because what they do is after they were done with this movie, they had the robot there in, in uh, the props, and they would they needed a robot for something. They grab Robbie the robot and they make a few modifications here and there, and and uh, and and apply him to that. Speaking of Don Wells, we're talking about Gilligan's Island. Uh, a little trivia here with that. There was an episode in Gilligan's Island where a robot actually walks on the floor. You know, he, he winds up going to the island and they figure out a way to get him uh, to send help. They record a, a message on the robot and then they have him send help by walking along the floor of the, specific, of the Pacific back to, uh, to Honolulu to, to get help. And, uh, of course, Gilligan kind of screwed that up uh, by giving him this lucky rabbit's foot and got stuck in there and erased the tape. But um, that robot was Robbie the Robot. A few modifications, but it was Robbie the Robot from Forbidden Planet. Um, it had been used in a lot of films. He said, actually, he still used to, he was in, uh, Robbie was used in, uh, I think, one or two episodes of the, of the Twilight Zone. Um, so he's, he's been in a lot of films. Let's see. Barnstar says, I like the Lone Man survival movie plots, but it was just so ridiculous that I didn't care much before it. Yeah, you know, sometimes they're, they have to be done right. They have to be done right. And there are a number of movies that have the Lone Man survival thing. Now, there was one movie that, that I think did it really well. Even though it sounds kind of corny, it was actually pretty well done. Uh, and that was Robinson Crusoe on Mars. I like that film. Robinson Crusoe on Mars, another uh, classic sci-fi movie. I forgot who's in it. But uh, I edited that for television when I worked at uh, Channel 35. But uh, I'd seen it several times. Robinson Crusoe, and every time I, uh, uh, you know, I, we were going to run that thing and we we're going to get the film print. It was actually on film, 16 millimeter. Every time we got the print in so we could run it, um, I went ahead and grabbed it to edit it because I enjoyed watching that movie. And, uh, yeah, he had a character, Friday, uh, kind of a Friday-like character, which uh, uh, was basically uh, another alien that was, uh, that was there that was uh, from another species that was there as a, as a, uh, as a um, uh, refugee, not a refugee, but a slave for, for uh, the, these other aliens that were mining this this uh, planet that he was stuck on. I, I don't want to go into the plot, but it was it's a good movie. If you haven't seen it, it's a pretty cool movie. I like it. Classic. And it's actually, I think, although a little bit ahead of its time for when it came out. Uh, but that's one of those Lone Man Survival films that I did like. Uh, there are a few that I've, I've liked. Um, I want to say Silent Running is another one. That's kind of, it's not, I wouldn't say it's a Lone Man Survival film. Because uh, he wasn't alone in the beginning, and uh, he, he didn't survive. <laughs> Spoiling the plot, another plot spoiler. But uh, that was with Bruce Stern. Bruce Stern played the leading role, uh, role in that film. But Silent, if you've ever seen Silent Running, that's also a very good, good film. Um, 
Let's see. Barnstar says, seen all the aliens, even Prometheus and Covenant. I haven't seen Covenant, but I have. I, I, I did watch Prometheus. I, I actually, a lot of people didn't like Prometheus. I kind of liked it. I, I thought it was it was a different take on it, uh, on the whole Alien franchise, a little bit different take. But I actually kind of like Prometheus. And, and some people, uh, I say they could have done the ending a little bit better, but I, I still liked it. Um, I haven't seen Covenant yet, though. Tom Antio's in the chat, and uh, Tom Antio, good to see you. He says, Alien is one of my favorite sci-fi movies, and it's a classic, to be sure. Barnstar says, uh, Barnstar says, didn't see Forbidden Planet since I was too much of a young'un. I was introduced to Leslie Nielsen during his Naked Gun slapstick days. Oh, well, uh, yeah, Leslie Nielsen did a lot of, of different films. He, he, he was actually a very versatile actor, but he played, he played uh, white hats and he played black hats. You know, I'm talking about like the cowboy. He, he was in uh, a number of westerns. Uh, both different kinds of parts, and uh, he was he was in a lot of different movies. Uh, he had a very broad range, but one of the things that he never did was comedy that he really that he wanted to try. And um, and when the Zucker when the, uh, the Zucker uh, Zucker and Abrams and all those guys made Airplane, uh, they gave him a shot at it, and they said, hey, you know, let's put him in there because we need a straight guy to play comedy. And it was something that he didn't really consider too much until he did that part. And he really, really stole the audience. I mean, he, he stole that show. Well, let's face it, in, in Airplane. So after Airplane, the Zuckers, Abrams, and, and those guys uh, said, well, we got to do more with him. So, uh, and, and uh, Nielsen at that point said, you know what, I can really get into this uh, comedy thing. And uh, they, they completely switched gears. And then, of course, they came out. You know what came out before The Naked Gun, right? You know what The Naked Gun is based on? The Naked Gun is based on Police Squad. And that was a very short-lived TV show. We've got all six episodes downstairs. It's a classic, classic TV show. I've never seen Police Squad. You've got to find it and watch every one of those episodes. It is awesome. The network only aired six episodes, and they pulled the plug because out of the stupidity of the network executives, which I think most network executives are pretty stupid uh, and short-sighted. They said, audiences would never get the jokes. Audience are not smart enough to get this kind of humor. That's basically what they said. I mean, that's how, they th that's how stupid they think people watching TV are. Now, let's face it, some of them are, but a lot, most people are smart enough to be able to discern good comedy, okay? And uh, if, they, if they weren't, the Carol Burnett show wouldn't have been on the air. If they weren't, a lot of the Star Trek wouldn't have been on the air. If they weren't, they were, you know, a lot of these other shows, Green Acres wouldn't have been on the air. And, and Green Acres, yeah, I, you could say it's low ball, but lo oh, I love Green Acres, one of my favorites. But that's not sci-fi. Another topic for another time. But uh, with Leslie Nielsen, when he did the six episodes of Police Squad, and, and it got cut short, and, but the thing is, it was so popular, and the fans were saying, oh, man, you got to do movies. So they, they got in there and said, well, let's make a movie. So they made The Naked Gun. And The Naked Gun movies were extremely popular. They made three of them. They probably would have made more, but uh, Leslie Nielsen had passed away at that point, I think, uh, uh, in the early, of course, early on, uh, there, there was, uh, who else was there that, uh, yeah, <laughs> OJ Simpson, uh, was, was in the, when the, it was in them too. And he kind of, uh, well, let's not even go there, but, um, let's see. I'm looking through the chat here. Uh, original alien is a classic. Tom Antio says that and says, yes, such a good time. Uh, score guy says, are we talking about Star Wars yet, or are we ruling that out as a space opera? No, no, Star Wars is, is pure science fi as sci-fi, science fiction. We can, talk, we can talk about that. Ed Anthony, Forbidden Planet, Anne Francis, that's it. Anne Francis, why did I say, did I say Connie Francis? I got the wrong Francis, didn't I? <laughs> it was Anne Francis, yes, it was Anne Francis. Ed's in the chat, Ed, uh, our other Ed, Ed Panis is in the chat. He says, hi, Rick. Uh, this is one that won the book uh, last last uh, uh, a few days ago at the the New Year's one. He says hi Rick and hi Rebecca Ed. Uh, you know by by the way I just toasted you again. We'll toast you again. Happy birthday to Ed. 
Uh, I hope you're having a great birthday, by the way. Hope it's a great one. I'm sure it is. Ed says, I'm a bit inebriated. 50 years on the planet as of Monday. So Ed is not afraid to, uh, to put up his, his um, age. 50 years old on Monday. Ed, I tell you what, Ed, you don't look 50, actually, you know. But uh, here's to Ed Edward Pennis. Happy, happy birthday to you. Okay, I got to do it again, don't I? Yes, I've got to do the fireworks. Okay, here we go. Got to do it right. Ed, here's to you. Happy, happy birthday. Here's to Edward Pennis. 50 years on the planet as of Monday. So, um, oh, you know, I should have done something here. Let me do this now. Okay. Uh, yes, you can talk about Star Wars. We can talk about Star Wars. We can talk about the Mandalorian. But I want for those who haven't seen the last episode of the Mandalorian, uh, Mandal- I put up the wrong thing here. Right? Yeah. For those of you who haven't seen the Mandalorian yet, or the last episode of the Mandalorian, I don't want to spoil it for you. But I have got to say, I think uh, Disney somewhat redeemed itself on that last trilogy. Because the last scene in that uh, episode, the, uh, the last episode of Mandalorian, oh, I'm not going to talk about it, but in fact, in, the people have seen it. But you've got to see it. If you haven't seen it, you've got to see it. And if you love Star Wars, you absolutely have to see it. Because uh, I'll tell you what, it, I, I was reading later that it brought tears to so many, to the eyes of so many guys, especially around my age, who really wanted to see that. And we got to see it, and it was kind of sort of like, well, I'm hoping we're going to see something spectacular. But boy, did we see something spectacular. And that, you know what, I put the ending of the Mandalorian uh, episode there, the, the season, the ending of the season. I put the ending right up there with the ending of the new Newhart show. Now, I'm saying the new Newhart show. I'm not talking about the original Bob Newhart show, but the other Newhart show called Newhart. You know, the one with uh, Larry, Daryl, and Daryl, and all those guys. To me, up until The Mandalorian, I thought the new Newhart show had the best TV series ending. The best ending of a TV series ever. It was, it was just, it was an awesome ending. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go back and check it out. It's on YouTube. You can just watch it. But if you're a Newhart fan, even if you weren't, you've got to admit... The ending of that series is probably one of the best endings of a TV series ever, in my opinion. Now, up until that time, I thought that nobody could top that. Nobody could top that. Now, of course, and that I topped that even above MASH, the ending of MASH, okay? And MASH, the end of MASH was good. Yes, it was good, okay? There have been other TV shows where the endings were good. One that I can think of right now, which is sci-fi, Eureka. Uh, the TV show Eureka, uh, where where the you know the super smart people and the sheriff um, on the Sci Fi Channel, the ending there was pretty awesome. I have to say, I'm not going to spoil that. I've never seen the show. That ending was pretty good. Uh, and the ending of Warehouse 13, a tearjerker to be sure. But if you if you've watched the whole series of Warehouse 13, and you get up to that last episode, a really awesome ending. Really awesome. I enjoy that immensely. My whole family did. We, we said we watched the whole series of Eureka. Really good ending. Monk had a great ending. Psych had a really cool ending. You know, TV shows like that. Great endings when you can end a show like that. But uh, I put, uh, since The Mandalorian, I think I put The Mandalorian as number one, probably the number one greatest ending of a season uh, of a TV show uh, I think I've ever seen. I, th- I think it is, I, and, and I, I give them kudos for that. I don't think, uh, and as much as you may not like Kathleen Kennedy, uh, they really need to do something about her, you know, move her off to something else. And you got to get off the Star Wars thing because she, she pretty much, uh, I, in my opinion, I think she all but ruined the, the, the last uh, trilogy but um, or had a big hand in doing it. Uh, aside from what's his name, uh, the guy who... who uh, Directed uh, episode eight, whose name will not be mentioned, 
But uh, I think The Mandalorian did a lot to redeem that. Very awesome ending. Uh, Ed says, um, Ed, oh, okay, Ed Panna says, I have the hiccups, LOL. You're a little inebriated, aren't you? Well, happy birthday. Ed, uh, Anthony says, I saw Alien with you, and you reacted to the pin bike line. We all seen Dark Star. Yes, absolutely, we did. We, uh, we did. Ed was, uh, Ed, Anthony was with me at that time. I remember that. Peter Schickel of PDQ, oh yeah, Ed says PDQ, uh, Peter Schickel of PDQ Bach did the music for Silent Running. Yes, he did. I'd forgotten about that. Thanks for reminding me. And Ed says, uh, Ed Anthony says, Airplane, don't call me Shirley. Yeah. You're welcome, Ed. Ed Panis, Ed P. There's Ed A and Ed P. How about that? And Ed, if you need to go P, it's okay. <laughs> I like, uh, Barnstar says, I like the, lo oh, uh, that's old. I left, uh, I scrolled way up, didn't I? Okay, so um, the score guy says, yeah, we better be careful about spoilers. We, uh, I've seen it all, though. Uh, we're talking about uh, Mandalorian. Square guy says, I think it's crazy that it's the first Star Wars thing since Emperor Strikes Back that is more or less universally loved. It is, and for obvious reasons, for obvious reasons. Uh, Tom Antio says, I love Rogue One and Solo. Yeah, you know, I, a lot of people didn't like Solo. I thought it was pretty pretty good. I, I actually liked uh, Solo, and uh, I saw it with Tom Antio. And uh, Rogue One, I actually thought was pretty cool, too. It's kind of sad. The, the ending was kind of sad, but you kind of knew it sort of had to be. But, uh, yeah, Rogue One actually was pretty well done. Uh, Square Guy says, did you hear Pedro Pascal got put in hospital? No, I did not. What happened? Uh, he says apparently his back is really messed up from carrying the entire Star Wars franchise on his back. <laughs> okay, I should have seen that one coming. I should have seen that one coming. You got me there. You got me there on that one. Uh, Toto the Dog One is in the chat. He says, hi, Rick. Hi, Toto the Dog One. Uh, it's great to see you. Uh, I'm glad you're here. Uh, and... Uh, Let's see what it says. Rogue One, uh, that square guy says, Rogue One is definitely my favorite Star Wars movie. Solo was pretty good. I just didn't like the droid at all. I don't know. I, I thought the droid was okay. Um, Barnstar says, enjoyed Solo a lot. Yeah, it wasn't okay, but you know, I like the, the I like the droid in, uh, I like the droid in uh, Mandalorian better. I think... And they still have pieces. Well, they had pieces on them on the on the ship before. Uh, okay, that's spoilers again, right? Spoilers. I gotta get any spoilers. When can we start talking about spoilers on the Mandalorian? I guess it's gonna be a little while, right? Go see the Mandalorian. Then we can talk about spoilers, and nobody will care. That'll be great. Um, uh, that square guy says. I'll take 100 K2SOs over L337 any time. Uh, <laughs> bad joke there, yeah. I can't believe they called it L337. <laughs> yeah. L337 is, is uh, leet speak for leet. <laughs> for those of you who are not that into, and, and for old guys like me that were that uh, were around when it first came into being, yes, that was easy, elite. Yeah, L337 is a little send up to the geeks out there like me. Uh, yeah. Oh, and RJ Sousa is in the chat. RJ Sousa is in the chat. I missed that. I hadn't checked um, uh, YouTube for a while because the, the, the there wasn't anything going on. But I'm glad you're here. RJ Sousa says, much love from Hawaii. I really enjoy your content a lot. Can you do us a solid and show us some love back by saying, Boto. Thank you. Well, Boto. Here's to R.J. Souza. I hope you, everyone's doing well in Hawaii. I know they're on a serious, you're on a serious lockdown over there. Um, my good friend of mine, um, an old old guy podcaster, an old guard podcaster like myself, Todd Cochran, he went uh, back to Hawaii for a few days, and uh, he was just shocked at just the difference, night and day difference between uh, the way it is now and when it was when he left. So um, 
Uh, yeah, I, 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 you know, this been this pandemic's been tough for all of us. It's been tough for all of us. But I tell you what, uh, you folks in Hawaii, I know you've you really had um, you've already, you guys have been really locked down. So uh, I hope I hope you're you're faring well, R.J. Susan, and I and I hope that uh, that everybody's okay. To all my friends in Hawaii, I want to say aloha, and and uh, and uh, we're, th- we're thinking about you over here on the mainland as well. So um, uh, hopefully we'll all get out of this very very soon, because it's taking its toll on everybody in a lot of different ways, and that's one reason why we do this show is because to kind of take the edge off of some of that. We're all stuck at home and. Doing other things, and if we can forget our troubles for a little while, and just get together and have a good time, I think that I think that helps, and I think it helps. It helps us all mentally too, you know. It does. It, it helps us all mentally to get through some of this because it's just not. It hasn't been easy. Twenty twenty hasn't been easy, and hopefully twenty twenty one will be much easier. We'll hope so. Have some faith. We'll keep the faith on it. Um, you know, I had a few dad jokes. I think I blew him earlier. <laughs> you know, so Ed Ed Panis on your birthday. I, I got to tell you a story about Ed Panis, okay? I got to tell you a story about Ed. So we're at uh, we're we're at Podfest last year, and so so Ed finds a lamp, okay? Ed finds a lamp and he rubs it, and this genie pops out, okay? And the genie says to Ed, he, he goes, all right, Ed, Ed, you get three wishes. And Ed says, oh, man, great. And so Ed's thinking a second or two, and he goes, okay, I wish I was rich. A genie, abracadabra, the genie says, okay, Rich, what's your second wish? But I'm bum. That's a birthday dad joke for Ed uh, Panis. Sorry. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Hope you're not too. Uh, maybe he was off. Uh, 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 <laughs> I, I, <laughs> birthday joke to Ed Panis. There you go. Uh, and Ed Anthony, be here next week because uh, I really want you to win one of these books, these 500 plus dad jokes. By the way, I got that one out of the book, okay? But it's not copyrighted, so uh, oh yeah, if you haven't seen it, here's the uh, where's my uh, where are my photos here? All right, um, oh I got to show you this. I got to show you this. This is funny. I was at the store. I was at the store not too long ago. I'm walking through the store and I see this, and I had to take a picture of it. It says uh, blood orange is three ninety nine each, and I'm thinking to myself. Blood oranges for three ninety nine each. That's not a bad deal. But I'm looking at this display and I'm thinking, okay, where are the blood oranges? Uh, those are not blood oranges. I know what a blood orange is. Okay, that those are not blood oranges. And they weren't selling them for three ninety nine each. <laughs> okay, so uh, that's uh, that's uh, no, that's a real picture. I really, I really came across that. That's uh, um, yeah, they wouldn't cut me a break on those. They, they really, they really wouldn't. So what was I looking for? Okay, I was looking for this five hundred plus dad joke books. Uh, where is it? Here we go. Five hundred plus dad joke books. Funny, clean, corny, and just plain silly jokes. I'm going to give a couple more of these away next week. We're going to do another dad joke, too. So please, Eds, be here. Both of you be here. We're going to give away some more books. And uh, maybe uh, uh, Ed Anthony may win one. Give out your best and your worst dad jokes. And we'll do some more dad jokes for next week. We'll have a lot of fun. And uh, everyone else, too. We can ship to Hawaii. We can ship to Hawaii. So uh, R.J. Sousa will be here next week. We'll, we'll, um, maybe you'll win a dad joke book. How about that? That'd be cool. And uh, let's see, and everyone else on Twitch, who hasn't won a dad joke book next on, uh, uh, on Twitch so far? <laughs> maybe you'll win one of those next week as well. And uh, Barnstar says, which K2SO is great in Rogue One? 
of, oh, where was it? Oh, yes, there was one more thing I need to do real quick. And I, I need to do this real quick because I do it every week real, real quick. You know, as, as of course, you know that I work for ByToyRadios.com. We saw all kinds of radios. Please, winter is here. We've already had a nor'eastern. We're having some more. Who knows? We'll get blizzards and all kinds of stuff. Uh, get yourself a weather radio. Please get yourself a weather radio. I have a number of radios here. Whoops. Forgot to do this. I have a number of radios here. Sorry about that, folks, because I, I was late in turning off that, that uh, image. I have another number of radios here. And uh, they're not, uh, well, come on, we're equipped with NOAA channels. But uh, NOAA Weather Radio, please, it's very important. Go to ready.gov, R-E-A-D-Y.gov. Get yourself together an emergency preparedness kit. Be prepared. Those of you who live in Florida know what I'm talking about. Be prepared. If you're on the West Coast, be prepared for her, for uh, earthquakes or any uh, fires, any other disasters. Those in the middle of the country, be prepared for tornadoes, or winter storms up the Northeast, winter storms, Northwest winter storms, and in the South, we might have a couple of those ourselves. I don't know. We don't. We haven't uh, had any snow yet, but we want to be prepared. So the thing is, is that it's important to be prepared. It's very important to be prepared. Um, be prepared with a, uh, a weather radio. And you can do this. You can do this by... Uh, there you go. You can do this by going to... Uh, no, that's the wrong one too. Boy, I keep, I keep hitting the wrong buttons. There we, no, that's the wrong one. There we go. There's the right one. You can do this by going to buy2wayradios.com. Use the promo code WINESHOW, W-I-N-E-S-H-O-W. That's WINESHOW. You can save 5% off your order if you order a weather radio. Uh, please do that. We don't make any extra on this, okay? We lose 5%, okay? And I'm not doing this because I'm getting paid. This is my job. That's my day job. I'm not getting paid to do it. I just, I'm just doing it because this promo code is for you, okay? I want to save you 5%. But most of all, I want you to be prepared. Go be prepared, please. Uh, it's very, very important. Okay, I think we're getting close to uh, the end of the show. And I think there was one more thing I wanted to show you before we, before we end the show. And if I could find it, I'll, uh, I'll pop it up there. That's, uh, well, what are we, oh, I don't know what we were doing. So, uh, and that's not it either, but it's uh, snowing. I think it's snowing outside. No, it's not snowing outside. <laughs> All right, let's wrap it up. Let's do one little short thing with the... Uh, let's do one short thing. that It's something I forgot to do with the sci-fi stuff. I was going to do this. I was going to do this. Um, okay, sci-fi stuff. Let's see, we had to have some sci-fi thing going on here. And then let's talk about the Matrix for a minute. Who has not seen The Matrix? Okay, did you know that they're coming out with another Matrix movie? You thought that the third Matrix, Matrix Revolution, there was The Matrix, and then there was Matrix Reloaded, and then there was Matrix Revolution, okay? You thought that we were done with The Matrix movies. No, we are not. They're coming out with a Matrix 4. They're redoing, uh, they're, they're going to, I guess you're talking, attacking on something to the story. I don't know what, I haven't seen it yet. The Matrix 4 is going to be out at some point, uh, I think, this year. And Keanu Reeves is going to be back reprising his role in, in, uh, in, in Matrix 4. Reprising, reprising. Rep ah. He's going to be back, okay? So uh, he's going to be back as... Uh, I, I don't know if he's going to be back as Neo or if he's going to be back as uh, pseudo-Neo or as Neo-Neo or, or whatever. I don't know, but he's going to be back. Who knew? I thought that was the end of the franchise. I thought that was the end of the story. And it was a good end. I mean, it was a complete ending to a story, but they're going to do it again. So who knows? Who knows what this is going to be like? It might not be any good. It might be really, really good. I don't know. But uh, we'll see. Let me know. Let me know. Uh, Ed says, spinoff hint, do I remind now? Spinoff hint, you know, <laughs> you know what, Ed, I completely forgot about spinoff hint now. What was it? 
Was that the spinoff? No, that wasn't spin. Oh, oh, right, right. Thank you, Ed. Thank you, Ed. Appreciate it. Okay, it's getting late. It's getting really late. We're going on, going on for two hours now, and I said I wasn't going to do this for an hour and a half. Okay, spinoff um, beginning this uh, sometime this month. I haven't set the date exactly yet, but we're going to do because we're doing drink with Rick, the wine edition. We're going to start doing drink with Rick, the coffee edition. So instead of wine, for that time we are going to do some coffee. This will probably be happening at the end, of, uh, well, not this month, I'm going to say this month and next month, beginning of February. Uh, we're going to start doing coffee. So we'll have like a Monday morning. It'll be very early in the morning. This is going to be very, very early in the morning because I, I start work at 9 a.m. here, but I'm still in my home studio, office studio. But we're going to... Um, Start reviewing coffees and start talking about coffee because one thing next to wine that I love, I love tea, but I also love coffee. And we're going to start reviewing some coffees. So what do you think about that? This has been something that I have been thinking about for a long time, for, for over a year. And uh, somebody tip, tipped it off a couple of weeks ago. I don't know if it was Barnstar or somebody uh, over there. said, so why don't you do one on coffee? And I'm thinking, hmm, I don't want to jump the gun on this. But uh, that was actually part of the plan. But uh, we're going we're going to do that. We're going to we're do, going to start uh, talking about coffee. Very, but it'd be very early mon in, in Monday morning. So we're starting it off for once a week, and it's going to be kind of uh, like this, kind of the same sort of thing. But it's basically gets people started on a Monday morning. So it's going to be a Monday morning coffee edition, coffee clatch, more or less. So uh, let me know what your thoughts are on that, actually. Let me know what your thoughts are on that. Send me an email. Let me know. Send it to uh, t send it to this email, rick at savoyamedia.com. Send it to rick at savoyamedia.com. Let me know what you think of that, good, bad, and different, whatever. Uh, got any coffee recommendations? Because I have a lot. And uh, maybe we'll brew some coffee right here on the show. That could be fun. Just brewing the coffee live here on the show. Yeah, might start off with the Keurig. I don't know. <laughs> it might be just brewing coffee for real. Maybe grind them up and have a little ASMR going here with the really loud grinding going on. It could be a lot of fun. It could be a lot of fun. The sky's the limit on this. We could have a lot of fun. But this would be Drink with Rick, the coffee edition. So that's the tentative title. So what do you think about that? Pretty cool? Uh, sounds good. All right, well, I think it's time to go. We have, I have overstayed my welcome, uh, I think, at this point. Uh, we, we could, there's so much more sci-fi we can talk about, and we can do some more of it next week. Uh, but we are going to get back and do the dad joke thing next week. And Ed, Anthony, please, please be there for that, and uh, you might have a pretty good chance. Get your dad jokes ready. They don't have to be good ones. They can be bad. We'll do a, a best and a worst dad joke. You might win a book. My, and I know how I know how much you love books because I love them too. And this is an easy read. This is a fun read. I was reading through some of it today, as a matter of fact. So anyway, everyone, I want to thank you all for being here with me tonight. Here's my final review on this wine. The, the wine we've been drinking is the Den. It's a Pinotage, 2019 Pinotage. It is a Pain Wolf uh, winery, I think. It is a 100% Pinotage. Uh, which is a, uh, a blended grape. It's a grape that's a hybrid of uh, Pinot Noir and uh, Sasson. Or, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's a hybrid grape, really. So uh, it, it's uh, actually very good. It goes well with, uh, it goes well with everything we tried it with. I think it goes well with the steak, goes well with the smoked turkey. I think the smokier items, barbecue, I think it goes fine with that. The, Cheddar cheese and the Gouda, double cream Gouda from Trader Joe's. I liked it. I like this wine. It's very good. And uh, I like Pinotages anyway, so it's not a big surprise. Um, I recommend it. I recommend this wine. I picked it up for $15.99 at uh, Sunset and Vine. And I want to thank my friend Bennett Larson for recommending this wine to me. He's, the proprietor, he's uh, one of the proprietors of Sunset and Vine in Blowing Rock, North Carolina, blowingrockwines.com. And no, they didn't pay me to say all that, okay? For FTC purposes, nothing here. I'm not getting paid for anything. I'm just, I'm paying it all out. It's, uh, it's just uh, what I'm doing because I appreciate uh, all of this. 
And most of all, I appreciate you for being here tonight. I want to thank for everybody that was here tonight. I want to thank Ed, Ed Anthony, Nancy, and Tom, if you're both there, my lovely wife, Chi, who prepared this, uh, this uh, platter for me, by the way, and who's very, very patient with me all through the years, almost 27 now. Um, and Ed Panis, Ed Panis, happy birthday once again to you. Uh, who else here was here in the chat? Okay, that takes care of that. And also, RJ Souza, thank you so much for being here on YouTube. I really got to pay more attention to YouTube. It's just that YouTube hasn't had a whole lot of action lately, so I, I sometimes I forget to check on it. And I apologize if you've been sitting there for a while watching. Uh, it, it wasn't meaning to ignore you at all. Um, I really appreciate you being there, and aloha to you and everyone in Hawaii. Aloha. And uh, I want to say, no, I'm not from Hawaii, but I have friends who are. And uh, if I wasn't afraid to fly, I'd go out there and fly there sometime. But I think I'll wait till this pandemic passes. But uh, to all of you out there, uh, keep the faith. I want to say thank you to everyone on Twitch, and there are so many of you on Twitch today. Let's see. Uh, do I, if, and if I forget you, I'm sorry if I miss anybody, but Cam Bread, thank you for being here. That square guy, of course, as always. Prop I'm still waiting for my mug to get here, my square mug, and I'm going to feature that on my new coffee uh, stream. Cam Bread, the square guy, proper barn star, of course. Scott M. Uh, THW, thank you for being here. And yes, I get involved in other alcohol too. Uh, let's see who else was here. Um, wow, there's uh, so much going on here in this chat. I want to thank, uh, I, I don't want to miss anybody here. And if I missed you, I apologize, but I try to catch you. I missed somebody last week. Tom Antio, of course. I have to scroll through the chat to find everybody. Uh, let's see. Is uh, Toto the dog one? Thank you for being here. I really, I'm really glad you're here. And um, if I did miss anybody, shout out. Now, look, before we go, I'm going to do this one more time. Before we go, everybody, put your links to whatever you have in the chat real quick for the last minute or so where we're closing up. Put your links, whatever you have, a podcast, you have a book, you have a script, you have a, uh, you have a Twitch uh, channel, you have a uh, whatever it is you have, <laughs> a blog, whatever it is, uh, put the links to it in the chat now. Let's, uh, let's do a little cross promotion at the end of the stream. Um, Ed, you have uh, Ed. Um, and I'm talking, and I'm talking to Ed Anthony now. If you have anything coming up here, any anything, put it put it in the in the chat, please. Uh, and uh, Darcy, yeah, Darcy Brunch. Oh, uh, oh, they're, they're talking to each other. Okay. Barnstar says thanks for staying up and streaming so late this week. You know, it's hard to put this down. I keep telling my wife that I'm going to do this early, and and she gives me the the evil eye every week. You know how that goes. Um, I do too <laughs> every week, and uh, the thing is, though, it's it's difficult to, to stop a stream because when everything is going, and I have all my friends here, my family, and everything's going on, and I just want to stick around with you guys. It's just it's just fun on a Saturday night. I really enjoy I really enjoy being here with you. I do, and I know maybe it sounds sappy or maybe uh, it sounds like I'm really overdoing it, but I'm not. I I just I, I'm sincerely I sincerely enjoy it. And I hope you enjoy it half as much as I do because I have a great time. And no, I haven't finished the bottle. So I'm speaking from the heart. Maybe it's a little bit of the wine, but I, it's mostly speaking from the heart. I do appreciate each and every one of you for being here, for sticking it out with me. Even if you're only here for, for five, ten minutes checking it out, um, I, I really do appreciate it. And and RJ Souza, thank you so much for being here. It's great to have somebody from Hawaii over here watching this, even if it's just for a little while. Um, thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Um, and what we're going to open up next week, I don't know. Be surprised. We'll find out. I have a few ideas, but we'll we'll see. We'll see. In the meantime, in the meantime, I want everyone to have a great week, and I want everyone to have a safe week. Uh, enjoy your week, but but stay safe, and especially during this COVID pandemic. 
Um, please do not drink and drive. You know how I feel about that. Do not drink and drive. You can drink this, but don't, well, this, <laughs> but don't drink and drive, okay? I'm looking at the fire. Don't drink and drive, whatever you do. Uh, drink this in the comfort of your home, your apartment, your hotel, wherever you are. Call an Uber, call a Lyft if you have to. Do not drink and drive because um, uh, that's not a good thing. Do not text and drive either. That's a very bad thing. Because I want you to have a great week. But most of all, I want you to have a safe week. So you can all join me here again next week on the Saturday Night Wine Stream. And we can all get together and drink with Rick. Good night.